module 1 introduction to geometric dimensioning and tolerancing next in this series so let's get started conventional tolerancing methods have been in use since the middle of the 1800s these methods do a good job of dimensioning and tolerancing size features and are still used in that capacity today but they do a poor job of locating size features and for many other tolerancing applications Objectives of this module is to Define GD and T Explain when to use GD and T And finally Identify three advantages of GD and T over coordinate tolerancing Now let us understand as what is GD and T GDNT is a symbolic language. These are some of the GDNT symbols. Next, it is used to specify the size, shape, form, orientation, and location of features of a part. Third point says that proper application of GDNT ensures that. Every part will assemble every time. Fourthly, it says that GDNT allows designer to specify the maximum available tolerance and consequently design the most economical parts. And finally, it says a properly toleranced drawing is not only a picture that communicates the size and shape of the part, but it also tells a story that explains the relationship between features. Now we need to understand as when to use GDNT. What are the cases which demand the use of GDNT? First case is when drawing delineation and interpretation need to be the same. Second case is when features are critical to function or interchangeability. Third case is when it is important to stop scrapping perfectly good parts. Fourth case is when it is important to reduce drawing changes. Fifth case is when automated equipment is used. Sixth case is when functional gauging is required. And lastly, we can say that we can use GDNT when it is required to increase productivity. Next, we'll focus on advantages of GDNT over coordinate dimensioning and tolerancing. Since the middle of the 19th century, industry has been using the plus minus tolerancing system for drawings, but this system has several limitations. Conventional way of tolerancing has various limitations, such as it generates rectangular tolerance zones. Rectangular tolerance zones do not have uniform distance from the center to outer edge. Size features can only be specified at the regardless of feature size condition. Regardless of feature size means that the location tolerance remains the same no matter what size the feature happens to be within its size tolerance. Here in this part, we can see that horizontal and vertical tolerance of the center position is same, but diagonally it's different. This is one of the limitation of plus minus tolerancing. Datums are usually not specified where the plus or minus tolerancing system is used. Measurement can be done from any reference surface or plane. When locating features with GDNT, there are three important advantages over the coordinate tolerancing system. First, GDNT offers cylindrical tolerance zones, which means uniform distance in all the directions from true position. Cylindrical tolerance zone is circumscribed about a square tolerance zone like the one shown here. 
and it has 57% more area than the square in which actual axis of the feature may lie. Second advantage is the maximum material condition symbol M in a feature control frame is a modifier. It specifies that as the whole size increases, a bonus tolerance is added to the tolerance in the feature control frame. Now, if we consider this drawing, we can see the minimum size of the hole is 3 at MMC and maximum is 3.030 at LMC. As the hole size departs from MMC to LMC, additional location tolerance called bonus tolerance is allowed in exact amount of such departure. For instance, if we produce the part shown in the picture and get the actual size of the produced hole as 3.020, then total tolerance works as shown here. So, total tolerance works out to be 0.034. Third advantage is that in GDNT methodology. For example, in this drawing, we do not have any datum specified and therefore measurement of dimensions can be done from any reference point. It's very clear that if drawings are dimensioned with traditional tolerancing methods, a considerable amount of information is left to machinist and inspector's judgment. If a part is to be inspected the same way every time, the drawing must specify how the part is to fit in the datum reference frame. All of the datums must be specified in order of precedence. In the drawing shown here, no datums are specified. The lower and left edges are implied datums because holes are dimensioned from there. But we do not know as which datum is more important. Is there any need of third datum plane? We don't have any information. A rectangular part like this is usually placed in a datum reference frame for inspection which consists of three mutually perpendicular planes. When datums are not specified, machinists and inspectors are forced to make assumptions that could be very costly. Part dimensioned this way can be placed in datum reference frame in either this way or this way where left edge is resting against vertical face. In GDNT, this is taken care by defining the datums in the order of their importance so there is never an ambiguity while considering datums for measurements. With this, we have finished first module on GDNT. If you have any questions, you can find us on social media. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.